Every dream in life starts with a thought that crystallizes into a dream that later becomes a reality. I'm here to share with you the journey on how to bring your dreams into reality, the obstacles that comes along, as well as the tools to use to pursue your own. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, so let me just take a step back. During the 2012 London Olympics, I watched many different athletes compete and win for their countries. A lot of those athletes were at my age back then, or even younger. Someone like uh, Ruta Melotete, who was a 15-year-old Lithuanian swimmer, she won a gold medal, and so many other athletes that really inspired me. I remember saying to myself, if they can win an Olympic medal, what's preventing me from doing the same? Now, I always loved sports, and I always loved running, especially fast running or sprinting, but I never did it competitively or professionally. But that seed of a thought stayed in the fertile soil of my mind and heart until the right moment came for it to sprout. That moment was in 2013, when the famous Palestinian singer, Muhammad Asaf, was a finalist for the TV singing competition, The Arab Idol. Palestinians worldwide wanted him to win, and he did. That night, I was laying in my bed at 3 a.m., not being able to sleep due to the loud, cheerful sounds of joy outside of my house. I thought to myself, if a Palestinian winning a regional singing competition sparked up so much hope, joy, and happiness, how would it be if a Palestinian wins a global sporting event such as the Olympics? This thought lit the light bulb above my head so strong, it crystallized the dream that has become my current, uh, that has become my current life mission. After that night, my life was giving a new sense of purpose. I woke up the next morning, started searching sprinting videos on YouTube. I went to my university's 200 meter track with a friend and a stopwatch, and I started training. I didn't know where I was going with this. It just felt like the right thing to do. It was where my heart and legs were. And I still remember the feeling of the sore legs and the happy beating heart I felt after that day. Training kept going, day after the other. I was getting better, but nowhere near where I want to be. I was still relying on YouTube and with no coach to guide. I'd open my arms to the sky and ask God to guide me in this and show me if it's meant to be. And I always received answer in a form of an obstacle. Until I met Coach Crystal Dunlap in Texas. Luckily, she was living in Jerusalem at that time, and she started coaching me with a more systematic training that brought my times down. But still, I wanted to put every breath into training, and with university and work on the side, that was difficult to achieve. Time passed, and I stood running. People kept thinking I was crazy, and that my dream is fetched. I got to the lowest point of this dream at the end of 2013, where I just could not see the hope in what I do anymore. I ran a race in Hebron. The track was basically a, um, a square asphalt pitch around the football field. So when I did the 200 meter race, uh, there was no curve but a 90 degree angle. That got me out of the race and made me finish in third place. I was so furious. I was upset and I just wanted to give it all up. The Olympics were 10 months away and I'm nowhere near where I want to be. Coach Crystal suggested then that, that I should go to Texas and train with Coach Bill Collins, a world-class coach and athlete that I met briefly before. She also suggested that I should do crowdfunding campaign to, fund, to sponsor my training with him. So I did. The campaign was so successful, we, finished, we reached the goal in one day. And by the second day, we had collected 163% of our goal. I was so happy, and it, this gave me so much hope and boosted my confidence. It made me also realize that this is not an individual dream, rather than a collective dream that everyone wants to see happen. I went to Texas, and I trained relentlessly, six days a week, twice a day, for seven months. I put every breath, thought, and action into training, but the Olympics were getting so close, and I needed more professional training time. A month before the Rio Olympics, I received the news that I didn't qualify. I was sad for like 30 minutes, but then I said to myself, well, I made it so far, now I actually have four more years of training. 
That day, I went to the track and I started training for Tokyo 2020 Olympics before the 2016 Olympics even started. <laughs> Two years later, today, here I am, still standing with the same fire in my heart. We even launched a second crowdfunding campaign to sponsor my training in Germany at the end of this month. Since I took the first steps on this journey, and I, and I have been understanding and learning more and more on what, it, on what it means to follow the path of your heart. And it is not an easy path, but because it is not easy, I believe it's right. This should be a picture of a Kenyan javelin thrower. His name is Julius Yego. He learned how to throw the javelin through YouTube. He won the gold medal in the World Championship and the silver medal in the Rio Olympics. Another picture of uh, Abibi Bikila, who was um, an Ethiopian marathoner that, that won the gold medal in the 1960 Olympics running barefoot. Now, once you start pursuing your dreams, you will most likely face different obstacles um, along the way. I summed up these obstacles into three categories. First is financial, and usually this is the biggest and the first obstacle to rise. How to fund my scientific research, art project, or even training camp? Well, as I always say, there's always goodness in people. Once they see a determined dreamer, they will support you, especially financially whether in the form of crowdfunding or sponsorships, but you need to have the patience for it. Second obstacle is the logistical one. Not having the proper facilities or tools to help you achieve your dream. This can be enough of an excuse for you to quit. Or you can utilize what you have, work on getting it better, but don't let it stop you. If you don't have access... <laughs> If you don't have access to the track, jump over the wall to get in. If your shoes get torn, stitch them and run, but just don't, stop. The third and the mother of all obstacles is self-doubt. You can overcome the first two obstacles easily, but overcoming your own mind is the hardest battle. Your mind will get to you at some point, whispering things like, you'll never make it, or give up, or this is too big of a dream for you. But these whispers will slowly diminish as progress emerges from your hard work and determination. Luckily, just like there are obstacles, there are also tools that help us to pursue, uh, this, uh, to pursue your dream. Uh, the most important tool is believe. Believe in your dream and vision, no matter who says what, especially the closest people to you. A month before I launched the first crowdfunding campaign in 2015, my parents told me to quit and just keep running as a hobby. Same with so many friends that thought my dream will never see the light. But here I am, still standing, still running, making progress with every passing day. Another important tool is persistence in what you do. The one who wins the race is not the first one to start, but the first one to finish. Keep your work hard and consistent. Nothing comes easy, but step by step, before you know it, you will cross the finish line. Another important tool is patience, and usually patience comes with persistence. You need to be patient with what you do and know that it might, the results might not show in a year or two. Just keep your mind focused on what you do and believe it won't be for nothing. When I first started learning how, uh, how to sprint on YouTube back in 2013, it was through a video for Carl Lewis. From, it was from back the 80s. Three years ago, I go to Texas for training and on the first day of training, I meet Carl Lewis himself. People often ask me why am I doing this and if it's worth it. Well, Palestine never won an Olympic medal. Winning one would rekindle so much hope in the heart of every Palestinian out there. Sports, just like art and science, can, be, can inspire so many and can be used as a tool for positive social change. During the 1968 Olympics, Tommy Smith and John Carlos won the gold and the bronze medal in the 200 meter sprint. Um, at that time, the African-American community in the U.S. W was facing so much oppression and injustice and racism that by winning an Olympic medal, they used the spotlight on them to remind the world of the oppression that they're going through back home. So 
in the end, regardless what you do, seek, or try to achieve, the most important thing to have, the most important thing to be embedded in every thought, breath, word, and action is love. The love to God, yourself, and others. Without this universal power, Without this universal power, dreams would be meaningless and tasteless rather than inspiring and powerful. Thank you so much.